Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Well, um, a little bit of history here. Um, back when I played World of Warcraft, um, my main class on there was Druid. Uh, so I just, I kind of had a little flashback. Um, just back, you know, just remember back when I used to play the shit out of this class, like, for the longest time, it was the only class I played in that game, just the Druid, because, um, you could do damn near everything with it. Um, you could, you could play all four, you could play all the roles, tank, healer, um, melee DPS, range DPS, you can do it all. Um, plus, uh, plus, the druid and, um, uh, in World of Warcraft, just like in D&D, &D, you can change animal forms. So, the druid in there was basically the, uh, basically the ATV of, um, the ATV of WoW, you know, the all-terrain vehicle, you can... Want to cross a body of water? You can. You know, here. Let me let me stop right here real quick. But anyway, what I want to what I want to do is um, I just had a sudden hankering to check out the Druid class in D and D Fifth Edition, um, just to see what it's like. But um, before I continue on though, I'm gonna throw on some music in the background. Um, this is a classic standby for me. Um, I've often played this in other videos too. It's definitely one of my favorite albums, uh, Golden Brown. Uh, gems and minerals so it's kind of a cross between ambient and bluegrass music if you can visualize that so, so let me go ahead and fire that up but like i said um just had a hankering to check out the druid class in D D fifth edition and i kind of went out on a limb on this but uh one really cool feature of uh, D and D Beyond is you don't you could purchase the online books, but um, as a huge upside though, you don't have to buy the entire book at once. You can just you can buy you can buy just this particular chapter, or hell, you could even buy this little sub chapter here too. So, like I said, you don't have you don't have to buy the whole book at once. So, what I went ahead and did is uh, I went on a uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything and Tasha's Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, I went ahead and purchased all the subclasses on both of them. Just, um, again, I'm kind of I'm sort of kind of going all in on Druid class, hoping that uh, maybe if I like this class enough I'll, um, I got my headphone wires messing up. But I'm, I'm hoping that if I like this class enough, maybe I'll create a maybe I'll create a druid. But, but like I said, I'm I'm not a. I'll probably talk more about this later. But uh, I'm in real life. I'm not a very outdoorsy person. I'm an urban kind of guy. But um, maybe if this uh, druid class is as cool as the World of Warcraft version, again, uh, the druid was my main. In World of Warcraft. So maybe if the D and D version is as cool as the one in WoW, I might actually create a druid. But, but, but we'll see. But like I usually do, for those that don't know, I like um, I like doing commentary on some of these articles, just looking them over and talking about them and stuff like that. But that's what I'm gonna do here. And uh, I'm gonna turn the music down from my end. It's a bit on the loud side. on the side of a form of a leopard and this is here let me let me highlight more of this in the form of a leopard this is probably the big draw with me for uh for for a while being able to change into into animal forms um and i guess uh diablo 2 it was kind of like this as well i i played uh i played druid like a motherfucker on uh diablo 2 just shit um, I think I had, I had two different, uh, two different builds, one for wolf, yeah, one for werewolf, and one for, uh, bear. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. Uh, yeah, 
horror nature. Um, I know, I know in previous editions, Druids had to be uh, straight up 100% pure neutral. I don't know about 5th edition though. Like, like, I forgot what I was going to say. But yeah, power of nature preserves the balance. I'm sure, I'm sure if you guys have played uh, RPGs to any extent, you, this is going to be all too familiar to you. Four elements that make up the world must remain in equilibrium. Kind of reminds me of the TV show Oz. I think in there, like a bomb. You know, it's a it's a show about uh, I think it's a maximum security prison. They had a they had to have like an even balance of factions. Like if uh, if two guys from the Aryan Brotherhood got murdered, they would have to bring in two more prisoners that were also from the Aryan Brotherhood, or at the very least white. That way, so all the all the races were in balance. Because if uh, if you had too many say Latinos in there, they would uh. They, you know, then more of them will start overwhelming the uh, Aryan Brotherhood. They start killing them, and then, you know, it, it, just, it just creates an imbalance, and it makes the prison a really big mess. So yeah, I think. So yeah, if if people of one race, um, if they got killed or if they if they got transferred out or whatever, they'd have to bring in some more, some more of that particular race. Jet way that way, so the prison stays in balance. So, yeah. The world be destroyed, drawn into one of the only planes broken apart. Yep. Dog ecological balance. Yep. Yeah, it's all we pretty much need these days. Climate change is a really serious issue. So, but like I said, I'm, aside from that, I'm not a very outdoorsy person. So, so, I mean, when I played WoW, the only reason I played a Druid again, because you could do so much stuff with them outside of combat. Um, and I think, um, oh, what? I think the goddess, uh, Shanti and or Myleki, they're, um, they're nature goddesses, but there was also a, a strong urban aspect to both of them. Um, Shanti is the goddess of agriculture, the goddess of farming, that kind of thing. So, like I said, there's a... There is a somewhat more urban aspect to her. Um, my Leaky, uh, she's... I'm not even sure I'm saying that right. My Leaky? I just keep, I just keep saying my Leaky. Like, as in my Leaky Bucket. But like I said, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how else that name's pronounced. So. But yeah, um, if I was to create a druid, this would probably be this is probably it, because like I said, I mean, climate change is a serious issue now, so. And, uh, my druid, my druid would probably be, if, if she was to, if my druid was to follow a god, it's probably going to be, uh, Shantae or my leaky, one of those, uh, again, there's like an urban aspect to him. Um. Sylvanas is the other nature god, but he's like the hardcore, he's like hardcore balls deep in nature. Like, like tree hugger extreme. Um, and there was another god of nature, um, Malar, but he's, he's the, he's the god of beasts. 
He's the God of all bloodlust. He's, he's actually an evil God. Kind of a, kind of a kill first, ask questions later. to mention too I don't remember the exact name of the book but uh, I read it many years ago it was a uh, memoirs of a park ranger um, I can't remember what exact horse but uh, he's he lives in Minnesota but yeah he he, he, actually, he was the one that actually got me at least somewhat interested in nature he basically said uh, nature is a, a lot of times it's like the real world like me scroll a bit, but a lot of times when people over the years when I hear people saying preserve the balance usually it, it just it's pretty it's a pretty shallow statement you know you just you know stop people from clear-cutting your forest for no reason that kind of thing but uh he kind of went deeper in this like you know just I mean hell I think uh, the way he put it just killing all uh, it's gonna sound very far-fetched, and it's the only example I can think of at the moment. But I mean, hell, just killing a whole bunch of killing a bunch of bees, just that alone can uh, can set up a really awful chain of events. In fact, uh, I think there's some news articles out there about it too. Um, just you know, honeybees—they're all dying in droves, and that's gonna actually cause a, a big-time nature imbalance. Because you know, you need the bees to bees are necessary to pollen, you know, they carry pollen, they help, you know, they, hang on, bees carry pollen to help, you know, help uh, grow flowers, like I said, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going off the cuff here, but you know, they, they're kind of necessary in nature, but like, I mean, he kind of said the same, he kind of said something along those lines too, just, just killing the bees can, you know, can really set things off, but it's, but basically, there's a lot more to nature than just, yo, preserve the balance, dude. You know, or you just going into bear form and and killing ten orcs and then reporting back to your quest master. You know, like I said, there's there's a lot of intricacies and stuff like that. Kind of like kind of like the human body. You know, one thing about you goes out of whack that could actually set off a chain of events that could affect affect other parts of your body as well. Nature is the same way, but I'm I'm kind of paraphrasing. I'm kind of going off the cuff. But like I said, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember how he put it in his book. You know, but base, you know, there, there's there's a lot more to preserving the balance than just uh than just going on Twitter and saying, "Yo, save the rainforest, dude." You know, and then just leaving it at that. And once again, this is what I'm mainly interested in right here. Wild shape. I'm assuming this means uh, switching on animal forms. Again, that this is what I'm mostly interested in. Judic circle. I think, um, I think the monk has this too. Like, um, you, you either stop aging or, and, or you're, um, you're no, you're no longer affected by it. The aging process doesn't make you slow or anything like that. But I mean, I'll probably talk more on this later. I talked about this when I did my monk creation video. You know, by the time you even get 18th level, you're probably so fucking old anyway, it just ain't gonna matter much. You're, already, you're probably gonna be an old man by the time you get this. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another drink.
Oh, this is interesting. Okay. You was associated with death and rebirth, so yeah, you could... So yeah, you could make yourself a wooden knight. trees for different reasons. I mean, it's... With, um... With RuneScape being the only exception that I could think of, most other RPGs I've played over the years, your your equipment could just simply have wooden as part of the, as part of the name, as in wooden shield, wooden sword, etc., and, and that was it. RuneScape, they kind of went deeper with the uh, woods. You started with, um, you know, you started with, like, a, a plain wooden bow, and then there was, a there was an oak bow. Um, after that, it was, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, what wood came after that? The, uh, maple bow. Then there was, uh, a yew bow. And then the strongest bow in the game was, uh, magic. You know, chop for magic trees. But most are one of the many nature deities. Considered a more ancient, ancient tradition. Um, these two gods here, I can't remember what part of what, uh, I can't remember what part of nature they, they cover, but these are, uh, third edition gods. Okay, Sylvanas, that's the, um, he's the 100% pure nature god, like, nothing urban about him. Um... Eldoth, I think she's the same way. She's the, um... She's the goddess of peace. Um... Uh, goddess of lakes and rivers. Goddess of groves, I think, as well. Uh, Ashante. She's the goddess of, uh, agriculture. So... My leaky's, um... She's a goddess of rangers. She's a goddess of people who make their homes in the wilderness. And then Shante, as I said before, goddess of agriculture. So these are the two, they're the two urban goddesses. And then the harsh gods of fury, uh, Talos, god of storms, Malar, um, the god of beasts and uh, bloodlust, Oral, goddess of cold, goddess of winter, Umberly. I think she's goddess of storms. Yeah, um, Talos and Umberly, they're the, they're the gods of, uh, storms of various kinds, I can't remember what. Maybe, uh, Talos might be the god of, uh, goddess of, like, or goddess, god of wind, uh, god of hurricanes, typhoon, excuse me, hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes, etc. Umberly might be the goddess of storms. Um, whirlpools, that kind of thing, sea storms. And Eberron, knew it on me. Never even heard of it. Okay. Ashbon, Arcane Magic. Oh, that's interesting. And I knew it, um, uh, in 2nd edition D&D, &D, there was, a uh, 
there was a certain city, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, because of all the magic damage that that city suffered for so long, you can only imagine they're, they're pretty, there's a, they have a pretty adversarial relationship with magic. But um, this is kind of new. I mean, druids and mages, I, I always thought they had maybe like a cordial professional respect towards each other, but you know, nothing, no kind of uh, no kind of hatred towards each other. But well, it's the first time I've seen this. So, okay, so here we are. We are in Brax Tax Ter Brax Brass Tax Territory. Okay, D D8. That's typical. Light armor, medium armor, shields, metal. Yep, it's got to be wood. It's got to either be made of wood, or I would think made from animals, like hide armor, hide leather. Uh... Oh, okay, so it's just, um, it's just armor. Okay, I thought it, uh, I thought it was like they couldn't have anything made of metal, but yeah, like... Yeah, but they can use, uh, daggers, darts, maces. Herbalism. Now, the, the monk I created is, uh... It's called a called a mercy monk. He's a he's a healer, and I uh, and some something I I keep forgetting about him. He can make potions as well, and he's also a he's also a euthanizer as well, just like uh Doctor Jack of Orkian. So, and intelligence and wisdom, and uh, on my monk. These are my uh, two biggest stats, intelligence and wisdom. So again, depending on uh, what else this class has, I might end up creating a druid. So, but again, we'll we'll see, we'll see. And yeah, um, insight and medicine. So yeah, these are definitely the two I'll be going for. Insight is basically uh, the art of reading people. Medicine, as you'd probably expect, um, just Basically, you're a physician. Ooh, perception's kind of nice, too. Too bad you can only choose two, but yeah. The, but these are probably the first two I'd go for. I definitely want perception, though. Um, as obvious as it might sound, perception is, is uh, how well you notice stuff. Okay, druidic language. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink. And then again, like I said earlier, I'm not a big spellcaster. I'm a melee guy. That I apparently uh hang on, I'm kind of racking my brain a little bit, but um I think back in the day cantrips weren't even they I don't think they were even part of your spell repertoire. They're basically uh cosmetic effects that had absolutely no bearing on combat or anything that could. That could uh, influence the game in any way, but apparently uh, these days they're a thing. It seems. Spend a slot of spells a little higher. Okay, uh, yeah. Now, to be fair. In fifth edition, they um they also have what's called a short rest. 
which is basically a one hour nap. In real life, I take these fairly often, one hour naps. But uh, yeah, those are uh, those are short rests. But unfortunately, you have to finish a long rest. They just, I would rather just be a shapeshifter than a spellcaster. But again, I don't, I don't know how shapeshifting works in this game. I think if I recall correctly, in, in previous editions, you could only you can only switch to a form fucking once per day. That was probably one of the that was probably one of the things that really soured me on playing the tabletop version. I mean, back when I played on uh, Baldur's Gate, it was one of the reasons why I used cheats. It's fucking that once per day crap, and um, a lot of the spells in earlier editions was freaking dominated by that. You can only fart in someone's general direction once per day. So, screw that, I just want to be a fighter. At least you can swing a sword more than once. This I don't care about. Here we go. This is what I'm really interested in. You can use your action to magically assume the shape of beast that you've seen before. Oh, damn! Okay. I already don't like this. No, but again, to be fair, at least you, you can use it twice. But even then, that that's not very helpful for me. Again, I think um, I think well, kind of corner the market as far as druids go. I mean, in there, you can shape shift as many times as you want, as long as you have the mana, as long as you have the mana to do so. Because uh, basically, changing shapes was basically casting a spell that consumed mana. But as long as you had it, you could you could switch forms as often as you wanted. And uh um, I don't I don't think there was a cooldown on any of them either. And again, it now this is a little bit helpful. I mean you don't have to get a full fucking eight hours of sleep in order to get those two charges back. Oh, what the hell is this? Your druid level determines the beast you can transform into. Second level you can transform. Has a challenge rating of fourth or lower than... Okay, um, I don't think I have the monster manual. Challenge one fourth. Okay. I'm assuming you guys can see that. Yeah. any rivers, lakes, streams, or or oceans, or anything like that. Like, well, or I hope I don't have to cross any bodies of water when I'm only second level. Well, I guess, I guess fourth level would be kind of a good uh, compromise. Apparently it can't fly into your eighth level, but it does but to be fair though, in a uh, World of Warcraft, you couldn't uh you couldn't fly until you're at least level sixty. So you couldn't do it like right off the bat. But I I don't think I have the monster manual. 
But I, I'd kind of like to see what uh, what the uh, one quarter monsters are. Now, please believe me when I say that it, this isn't my first option. I'm only doing this as a last resort, but I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to fork over the 20, 30 bucks or whatever to... Here, here let, me, let me do this. Okay, I don't think you can... Uh, let me let me go back down. You know, but again, it is a bit of an issue here too. You can only you can only do this twice. So if I want to cross a river. Or let's just say I was, uh, I was, uh, oh, what kind of, some kind of, some kind of big cat. We'll, we'll just say a tiger. You know, if I was a tiger, I'm sitting here driving through the forest, you know, super speed, and I come up to a body of water, you know, I don't want to take a damn scenic route when I can just go, you know, straight ahead of me. So I transform into, say, a water strider. Just a little insect that just glide, just glide stride across that water. And then if I want to keep going through the forest, switching back into tiger. Well, there goes my two charges. But like I said, I mean, what if, what if I need to, what if I need, need to climb up a cliff? Guess I'm fucked, because now I have to take like this super mighty massive long scenic route going all the way around it you, know, you, you kind of get the idea though I'm, I'm like i said world of warcraft kind of world of warcraft kind of cornered the market on this you know under under their rules i could have just transformed into an eagle whoosh, and just fly you know fly right above the cliff and just switch back to tiger and keep on going And then there's this here too. I mean, I mean, based on my experience playing uh, World of Warcraft, being able, you know, being able to switch to steel form and swimming underwater, that's fucking great. But it's not like uh, it's not like you're going to be constantly swimming and, or it's not like you're going to be constantly swimming or anything. You're going to be spending a lot more time either overland or overland or in the air, hardly at all in the water. So, God help me if my uh, DM has to put any uh, put any cliffs or high places in front of me while I'm uh, during uh, during the time I'm seventh level or below. And this, just to get this out here, because I'm pretty sure they could have easily made could have. Hang on, there's a word I'm looking for. God, what was it called? Wow had this in their uh one expansion, I can't remember it. They uh at one point they they uh completely banned locked out flying. Like there was no flying at all at one point in their expansion, then then they decided to go ahead and um they gated it behind a whole shit ton of uh, achievements and all these hoops that you had to go through. After which, by the time he went through all those hoops and stuff, flying became pointless. But yeah, so I guess... 8th eighth, eighth level seems a little bit high to have access to flying. But again, on the other hand too, at least it ain't no level 20. Yeah, that's like, that's World of Warcraft bullshit right there. Because later on, in, in later expansions, they, um, they gated flying behind all these achievements and all this other stuff that you had to do beforehand. And even then, you had to wait until the tail end of that expansion in order to be able to fly. So. 
half your druid level. Okay, play the stats of the beast, and this this stuff here is probably gonna go on one one eye and out the other. Again, I don't, I don't know what they mean by half. Yeah, just basically a more powerful monster. Okay, that, that's typical on all the classes at eighth level. Challenge rating one or lower. Gain when you finish a short. I mean, I guess that's a little bit better. A little bit better than the once per day bullshit you had to deal with in uh, previous editions. But I'd, I'd have to find time to. I'd have to find a time and a place for like a one hour nap. And, uh. And you could. And even in, in World of Warcraft, you were even, uh, I was even shape-shifting a lot, like, in combat. You know, if I was, uh, if I ran with a group as a tank, you know, if I was, uh, you know, if I had, if I had sufficient threat on all the monsters that were attacking me, and, um, uh, if my healer was good enough, if it felt like I wasn't taking enough, if I thought my healer could, uh, if he could heal up all the extra damage that I would take in the process, I would actually uh, switch to cat form and then just start uh, start applying bleed damage to all the monsters that was attacking me. You know, switch to cat form. Or if um if I thought I was in the clear enough, again, if I if I if it felt safe to do so, if um, another party member was taking damage, switch to healing form. You know, switch out of my bear form, switch to healing form, and and heal that party member up. Just put a heal over time on him, and then switch back to bear form. But again, this is one of the reasons why I like the druid class so much. Because you can do so damn much with him. But the way it's looking here, I ain't gonna be able to do shit. You know, uh, I guess... To toss a scenario out there, if it was uh, if it was a combat situation, if I was again, if I was in bear form, you know, fighting a bunch of orcs, for example, a bunch of orcs, and if uh, if somebody did a sneak attack on one of my party members, you know, instantly uh, shape shift into a cat, you know, sprint away from the orcs as quickly as I could, you know, sprint away from them, you know, find a safe spot, switch to say tree form. You know, heal up this party member, cast a heal over time on him, you know, where he's, you know, good and stable, switch, then switch back to bear form and take on the orcs again. Can't seem to do it in this game. Again, that was one of the beauties of the druid class in, in WoW. You could basically be everywhere at once. And uh, I'm gonna take another drink. So yeah, I mean, so it's gonna need a lot more use than just twice. I mean, to be able to do what I do in WoW, yeah, it, I'm gonna need a lot more use than just twice. And then, and then there's the inverse too. Maybe, maybe I'm running a dungeon with another party, but I'm, maybe I'm going in as a healer. So you know, I'm I'm ranged. You know, healing everybody up. But if um, 
if, for example, the the tank in the group decides to disconnect and leave the party, you know, so, I mean, it, prob it probably falls to me since, you know, I can shift into, you know, shift into bear form, brought up and take those monsters that the tank left behind, so it's not going to be a party wipe, so I can actually, you know, save the group. You know, so there's that as well, but, again, I ain't going to be able to do it in D&D. And then, I said this when creating the monk. For every 10 years that pass, your body ages more only one year. But I mean, shit, by the time you even get to 18th level, you're probably going to be so fucking old anyway, it just it ain't going to matter. It's just infinity plus one. I gotta look at something. Okay, there it goes. I got a... Uh, my, uh, my headphone wire is really messed up. So I have to I have to have the... I have to have the wire looped around my... One of my... My, uh, my left ear. Yeah, I gotta have it looped around my left ear because I have to have it in just the right position. Otherwise, I won't hear anything out of my left ear. So, but anyway, like, you know, like I said, I mean, it's infinity plus one. By the time you even get this, you're so old that it's going to be pointless. It's, it, for one of these, you know, I'd, I'd be forced to be a, I'd have, I'd be forced to be an elf. Or a half elf because they have such super long lifespans. I couldn't do this as a human. So that, that's kind of the other issue I got with this as well, because there's, there's a little, there's a little tiny bit of racism in this, you know. Because once again, I'd have to, I'd have to pick a race that practically lives forever, like an elf. I couldn't do this as a human or a half orc. Beginning at 18th level, many of druid spells in any shape. Okay, um, Wow had this. In fact, um, I don't know the name of it, but um. I think no um, it was one of the later expansions but I think it was an, it was an actual talent that you had to choose that you can cast I mean I went as a let's just say as, as a bear tank like I think it's called moonfire it's a ranged it's a it's a ranged spell it puts a damage over time on them but you could cast that ability while in bear form. I think um, I think it's called rejuvenation. It's a heal over time spell. You could cast that while in while in bear form. But hell, I mean you you got that you got that ability. You got that ability long before that you're gonna get a 18th level in D and D. So, but again, it, to be. Again, yeah, to be fair though, in WoW, I think it's just only those two, those two spells, and you got those spells at first level. You got them early. I'm assuming that many of your druid spells is going to include some of the more powerful high level ones. Good. Oh, sure. You can use your wild shape unlimited amount of times at fucking 20th level. I don't know, man. The way it's looking right now, by the time I even get... I probably wouldn't even get to 20th level now that I think about it. Probably so frustrated and burned out on this class, I probably would have gave up on it a lot before then. This is... To me, this is pretty much infinity plus one right here. At 20th level, you can do in D&D what you already could have done a long time ago and wow. Same thing here. It just hit me. I think this was probably one of the other things that kind of soured me on playing uh, playing tabletop D&D for so many years. I mean, fuck that. Again, you're 
this is probably a uh, I think I might have said this in one of my other videos too um what are the other things that uh that kept me from playing playing tabletop D&D was the fact that video games got me first I was playing video games back in like the late 70s early 80s before I even knew about D&D I mean in video game you don't need there are no material component requirements in uh, video games you know you want to play asteroids and shoot at asteroids you didn't have to you didn't have to expend a sugar cube to shoot a fucking missile you just did it push a button so But, you know, like I said, too, I mean, you just, I kind of, I kind of said the same thing about, there was something else I said about, uh, Timeless Body, by the time you, by the time you get it, it's pretty much pointless. I said this about, um, other game mechanics, too. By the time you even get to 20th level, you're probably so damn good at the game, you're probably so damn good at, uh, working with what you got that you, you know, you ain't gotta give two shits about that. Once again, you're you're so damn good at getting by without it that that just pretty much becomes irrelevant. So, but yeah, I've said that in other games too. Oh, you know, would have been nice to have this this ability at the start of the game. You know, because by the time you even get to that level, you probably got so damn good at the game you don't need it. Same thing here. Okay, and I believe this part here, um, again, earlier I purchased all the subclasses for uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It's a supplement book for those that don't know, and uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Again, I purchased all the subclasses in there, so. Druids who are So this is, um, this is what it's mainly going to affect right here. Circle of all the circles. Strong ties of Feywild and Dreamlike Realms. The Druids, Guardian, Sugar, Natural World, Mazer, Natural Lands between the Elm and the Bay. of Bay. What dream you wonder? Uh, so, pretty much a Fae themed uh, circle here. Magic, Men's Wounds, and Bring Joy. Oh, oh, uh, this is, uh, you could, uh, um, the goddess Lyra. Yeah, she's a goddess of uh, joy and parties. And at least in second edition, she was also the goddess of commerce. The um, original goddess of commerce, Joaquin, just suddenly went missing. And um, Libra took her portfolio. I don't I don't know about now. And um, I gotta... It seems I'm going a bit over long on this album. So let me go ahead and restart it. Oh, wow, I've got almost an hour on this. So, yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> might need to cut this a bit short. Magic Men's Wounds. But, yeah, it brings joy to uh, Downcast Heart. Like I, like I said, I bet a lot of uh, worshippers of Lyra probably take this. Your spider man trees, you have a pool of bay energy. Druid level. Northern dice heal, happy druid, roll the dice and have them together. Oh, okay. So, there's a healing aspect. And home can be wherever you are. Okay. Home can be wherever you are. Uh oh, we got this. Shadowy power of the gloaming court to. Touch a point in space and invisible. Plus checks. There is a there is kind of a, a second edition second edition spell that has something like this as well. Like whenever you guys are camping. Stealth and perception.
Self perception. Okay. Yeah. So I think there was a second edition spell that did something like this. Like whatever you know, you did it. You did it around a campsite. It hit. It made you guys hidden. You know. So I think it made you immune to random encounters. I'm gonna take another drink. I'm guessing there's a limited amount of doing amount of times you can do this. What's the modifier you get? Yup. Wouldn't be using this. And um in the TV Tropes website it's called Too Awesome to Use. Hidden Paths is definitely one of them. That's you can teleport up to 60 feet to an yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty cool ability right there. But on the downside, you can only use it a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. Since um your attributes can only go can go only go up to twenty, that's um you can basically use it up to five times per long rest. So yeah, like I said, which means I ain't gonna be using that at all. I mean it. If I have if if I have to sleep for eight hours in order to get those charges back, I probably won't be using this at all. Unless it's like a a blatantly obvious situation. Uh, let me rephrase that. If a situation would blatantly call for it, then yeah, I'd probably use it. But I wouldn't know when to use it. The other times, I mean, hell, my wisdom currently on my monk, I think it's 15. So I think it's. I think it's plus two. I'd only be able to basically use it um, twice per long rest. So yeah, uh, I probably wouldn't be using this at all. I wouldn't be factoring any equations again, unless a uh, unless a uh, unless the situation is like staring at me right in the face. I probably wouldn't be using it at all. Again, it's too awesome to use. Walker and dreams travel um second edition there was actually a, a psychic ability that had this called dream travel you fall you you um you fired up your your dream walk ability and um you go you go into a dream you have a dream and um where you end up at the end of that dream is where you ended up in real life Oh, okay, I see how this works. You finish a short rest. Oh, okay. I don't think it's in the player's handbook, or maybe it is. One minute, eight hours. Shape is a creature, dream, choose a creature, no to you. God of Decay, second edition. His name was Moander. Uh, decay, corruption, rot. So I'm guessing what this is going to be. Circle of Spores. Mold and other funky. Part of a grand cycle, one leading the other, and then back again. Oh, okay. Change of state to see. Okay, so not quite like Moander. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Kalem, uh, Kalempor, the, the god of death, he wouldn't like this one very much. I should, I almost should have streamed this. Because it's got to be about an hour now, and I'm probably, hell, I'm not even halfway through. Touch. 
Yeah. Halo of Spores. So yeah, this is basically a... Uh, Fungus Druids. Circle of Stars. Heavenly Patterns since time of Mario. Okay, so... Ast Astrolo Astrological Druids right here. Druids of Constellations. So, yeah, they're probably going to be Diviners. Uh, Diviners, Psychics, Fortune Tellers. Consider this one here if it would uh if it would extend to uh shape shifting. Um, res, for example, when you But like I said, I'm not a spellcaster. I'm a melee guy. If this would have uh, applied to shape shifting, I might consider it. on my muck, but I actually kind of like that. Oh. Of course, uh, by the time you get to, by the time you get to 14th level, assuming you lived that long, you probably had so many, uh, so many creatures of the natural world constantly attacking you. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be pro, you know, you wouldn't be, or have, let me, let me try to say this right. You want to get a sense of accomplishment getting nature sanctuary. You get a sense of relief. About time, maybe all these beasts that the DM keeps sending after me would, you know, would stop attacking me now. Sounds like this would be something that'd be kind of nice to have you would have gotten earlier. Circle of the Moon. We choose a circle of second level. Oh, okay, so you just... You can just shape shift faster. Transform the well. One spell slot. Okay, now this would be something that I could probably use. I could probably use this for. Use it for healing. One spell slot to regain one day. Yeah, so. Okay. So I don't have to have spell slots to cash in. I can just, again, use it for healing. But so far, Circle of the Moon. Six level year of attack. Monks have this too. Right around sixth level, all of the monks' uh, the monks' uh, punches and kicks and attacks and all that um, counts as magical. Use challenge rating as high as your true level divided by three. Ooh. Okay. 
That's great. Uh, how often though? I mean, if it's still, if it's still twice per long rest, or a short or long rest or whatever, and to me the uh, upgrade is uh, nominal. It's or negligible, I should say. I'm assuming Alter Self means uh, you can change into anything. In fact, let me uh, take a look at it. Aquatic. Okay, so yeah, you have more options. Give me a number of times. I'm assuming twice. Unless it says here. This is a, this is a Diablo 2 druid right here. There's a, a talent tree that's uh, specializes in uh, fire and ice. the druid so about an hour long went a little bit over long so so um if I if I do put timestamps in here um I might just do it instead of a uh, actual quote-unquote chapters I might just do it in like 10 minute intervals or something Cause yeah, this is a long video right here, but I wanna I've started timestamp and stuff. It makes it easier for people to jump around. So But um, but otherwise I'll just go ahead and call it good here. But I guess the uh, the final verdict the final verdict on this, I'm probably gonna say no. Like I said, it to me it falls short. I mean I was Maybe because I was spoiled and wow. But for for the way I'd want to play a druid, I I just don't see it happening in D and D. Now, to be fair, in Fifth Edition, they they are kind of making concessions here and there because the Fifth Edition version of the druid was a lot better than the older ones. Again, back then it was just dominant with that once per day stuff, like you could only shift to an animal once per day. So yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of that. So, but otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. Uh, but thanks for uh, watching everybody. I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.